Yesterday marked 25 years since Britney Spears released her first single. 25 years, wow. Uh, that was Baby One More Time, of course, which sent her soaring to global fame. She was only 16 years old. Now, in her highly anticipated memoir, which is out today, The Woman in Me, uh, Britney gives an inside look at her rise to fame, her tumultuous relationships, and that controversial 13-year-long conservatorship. I mean... We were just thinking, A, how long ago that she, she burst onto our screens mm. in that video, and we're like, wow, he's that so mm. young. Um, but she was on Loose Women, which was seven years ago. Was it? Yeah, wow. seven years. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, that. so we were very... So you were very so excited, excited to have her such on, a fan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I even brought my, my niece, who's just obsessed with her, I brought her from Blackpool for the show. I was like, Britney Spears is on, and yeah. she's in the front row. And, um, yeah, I remember it really well, but I also, I have to say, I remember how nervous... Very nervous. She was, like, shaking, nervous. Yeah. And just little things, like, I thought, oh, her nails are all, like, they were just bitten and there was half nail polish, or just chewing gum. Yeah. She was like that oh, she for was the whole thing, like, chewing, chewing gum. People... And they kept saying to me in my yeah. ear, make her spit the gum out. And I'm like, I'm going to ask Britney Spears <laughs> to spit her gum out. Um, but equally, her, equally <laughs> lovely, but we had to stick to questions and stuff, didn't yeah. we, very strongly. Um, she but came yeah. with a big entourage of big people, entourage, she had yeah. bodyguards. And looking back at the interview now, she almost seems like not present yeah. at mm. all. Really? Oh, that's She's just a bag of nerves. Think, have we got a clip, yeah. We've got a clip well. of that interview, I think. Um, this was seven years ago when Britney was on Loose Women. What would be your dream date? <clears throat> My dream date? Well, like you write your perfect guy. My perfect guy? Or a perfect guy or perfect mm. Would it be someone on? who doesn't know who you are? Well, that's not going to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I like I like younger guys. And like this morning, for instance, this guy came and he was like yeah. my waiter. I was like, oh my god, yeah. you're <laughs> adorable, and he was so cute. So um, I like I like spur of the moment things. I don't like it to be so planned. Like let's yeah. go on a date. I like to mm. just things to happen. Yeah. Order yeah. a lot of room service. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you watch she that. Fun. She was yeah. lovely. Yeah. Was. She looks fun. But we can see when yeah. people are Under here. Under the table, she's like that. Very shaky. Shaking under the she? table. But, but she's also um, written a lot in the book um, about her relationship with her father, of course, and this controversial conservatorship, Janet, 13 years. Um, and she said, you know, that ruled, <clears throat> ruled her life. She said she had a very difficult relationship with her sister. Mm. And that got us talking today about... Sometimes you think, oh, it'd be great to work with family because they've mm. got your back, you support each other. It's not always the case. It's no. Always... I mean, I never wanted to work with my family at all. In fact, I made a, a, a bit of a stupid decision in retrospect because my sister was really intelligent and could have helped me in so many ways if she'd wanted to, but obviously we were rivals. And, you know, she took a very different career path, path and ended up working in a supermarket for the last... 20 years of her life. But when I was writing uh, my memoir, I actually thought, you know, we're, I'm writing about our childhood and it was a shared experience. And I got my sister to do a load of research and she was really, really good at it. Did you pay her? I did pay oh, her right. properly. Just checking. I, mean, my just sister, I would never do anything for nothing. She was <laughs> like me in that regard. Uh, so she did a really good job. And then when she got, uh, sadly got uh, uh, sick with terminal cancer, I encouraged her to write a diary of her experiences, which um, we sold and so yeah. that her family got the money. Um, and it was published in a newspaper and, and, you know, made quite an impact. So that was my experience of working with my family. And, and you know, I feel sad that it, it only mm. happened later in life. Well, you wrote a book with your mum. What was that experience like? Oh, that was slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really close to my mum. She's a retired school teacher and she'll go onto Instagram in the comments section and correct my captions for everyone else <laughs> oh to see. Oh, my goodness. And uh, when we were writing, because we live sort of two hours apart now, so we would send each other our sort of first draft, second draft over email, and I would read hers and be like, oh, Mum, I've learnt so much about you, I didn't know, it's so emotional. She would just write back in red highlight being all the corrections, all the grammatical errors, <laughs> and she was like, if you don't know the grammatical difference between there and there, you don't deserve this book deal. <laughs> Regards, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> Thanks very much. And were, were you surprised at how you viewed the experiences 
differently sometimes. Yeah, I think, I mean, different generations, different ways of working. I personally would never formally work with not just family, but friends as well, because I think people can fall out over mm. things like money, uh, status. I think it can be difficult if one's more senior than the other. So I prefer to keep friends and family for the loving experiences. <laughs> well, Colleen, you've worked with your family your since entire I was born. lives since <laughs> you were born, yeah. yeah. Um, did, was it, did you always feel that you had each other's backs or was it difficult? Did you have difficult times? Oh, listen, we're a tell family. Somebody, look, this isn't working. Big Irish family. So obviously there was times if you'd have walked past our dressing room back in the day <laughs> and heard us, you'd have gone, they're splitting up right <laughs> now because we'd all be screaming at each other. We're sisters and brothers. But the best thing about family is two minutes later, we're absolutely fine again and ultimately we love each other. I couldn't have done what I did without them I, at such a young age. Mm. You know, I moved to London when I was nine, did my first TV show, but always with my family at 15 then proper, you know, records and stuff like that. And I look back at people going back to Britney's situation, I think, I don't know how they did it on their own, surrounded by people that actually you're just a commodity to who are making money out of you. And we kind of had that, but we had the protection of each other, especially me, because I was the youngest. But then when you... But, when, but my dad was our manager. Yeah, but when, but when the group was <coughs> getting bigger and more yeah. famous and more famous, it became a point where you, people were going, you need a proper manager, not your yeah, dad, Yeah, because is the thing is, my dad always had our best interest at heart, but he was... It got to a point where he was very... Out of, out of his depth, you know, it went much yeah. bigger than when we were... Obviously, when we were kids, he managed us all. So it got to a point where it was like... Everyone was saying it, but it was like, well, how do you tell your dad that he can't do this oh, job so anymore? Awkward. And as usual, I got out of it by going, well, I'm the baby, I'm not telling him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that he'll love me bestest. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, we just had to sit down and say, look, it's, it's got too much love. But do you know what? I actually think, thinking back, I almost saw an element of relief on his face. Because I, say, how did I he think take it? he was yeah. probably thinking, I actually don't know what I'm doing here. I'm getting contracts thrown at me, these yeah. big deals. And he was probably thinking, but I don't want to tell them, yeah. my daughters, yeah. that I don't want to look yeah. after them. So it was probably a relief Go for him underneath, but it was a really hard thing to do yeah. when it's family. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, obviously, I've worked with my family, my husband, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, you know, on the whole, 99 That must be so good. hard for him. <laughs> <laughs> Always on his side. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely think, listen, we had our moments, we had them on screen, as mm. you all know, you know. Um, mm. I just called them differences of opinion, we weren't arguing, just I didn't always agree with him. Um, but I always knew he had my back and he yeah. always knew I had his back. And yeah. that's a really nice feeling mm. that you don't always get with everybody. It's your chosen family, though, mm. that's why. Yeah. That's, yeah. Exactly. Well, it's an interesting <laughs> topic. Um, and Britney's book, as I said, Britney Spears, The Woman in Me is out today, if you want to have a read of that.